welcome to our today's uh, webinar on high food treatment for liver and pancreatic cancer. And I'm very glad to have these um, highly renowned experts on the panel and as um, reference for the interesting lectures. So I think um, I first should uh, introduce Professor David Cranston, who is my, I hope he will hear me. He's my co-chair. Co yes, I can hear you. <laughs> I think it's not, uh, not really necessary to introduce him, but he's the associate professor of surgery in the Nuffield Department of Surgical Sciences. <clears throat> the University of Oxford and honorary consultant, urological surgeon in Oxford University Hospital Foundation Trust. And uh, he qualified from Bristol University in 1975 and worked in Exeter and Bath before moving to Oxford. His special interest is in renal surgery and was awarded his uh, PhD in 1986 for kidney transplantation based research. He is author of more than 100 peer reviewed publications and five books including three on various aspects of the history of medicine. Since uh, 2001, that is for more than 20 years, he now has been clinical director of the high intensity focused ultrasound unit in Oxford, which uh, with colleagues in the UK and China is researching into a novel way of treating cancer without surgery. He has co-supervised 20 research fellows for higher degrees. He was elected a governing body fellow of Green Templeton College, Oxford in 2006. So by this, I can uh, give the microphone over to David. Yeah, thank you very much. And um, uh, let me introduce uh, Professor Strunk, who again, I'm sure needs uh, very little introduction. He is Professor of Radiology in the University of Bonn and together with Dr. Marivona, established and operated the first high food department for the treatment of non-operable pancreatic tumors in German speaking countries at the University of Bonn. And his principal areas of interest and expertise are high food ultrasonography and interventional radiography. And presently he works as chief physician in the Department of Diagnostics and Interventional Radiology at the Municipal Clinic of Solingen. Uh, and so I, I think it's up to me to introduce the first speaker, uh, who is uh, Professor Zhang Lian, who uh, has been a good friend and colleague for a number of years whenever I'm in China. So uh, he is director of the Chongqing Haifu Hospital and chief editorial board member of the International Journal of High hypothermia, as you can uh, read on the slide, and professor at the Key State Laboratory of Ultrasound Engineering in Medicine, co-founded by the Ministry of Science and Technology in Chongqing Medical University, where he's a professor. And he had first class, uh, class in the Science and Technology Progress Award in China in uh, 2009, and second class of the National Science and Technology Progress Award of China in 2010. And he's published more than 80 papers in international and domestic journals and more than uh, 100 other scientific papers. The highest impact of a single paper was nearly 17. And he is going to talk about the clinical experience of HIFU on liver and pancreas cancers in China. So thanks very much, uh, Professor Zhang Lian. I'll hand over to you. Thanks, David, and good morning, my friends. So it's my great honor to be here and have this chance to share the experience of high food treatment for liver and pancreatic cancer. Can you hear my slide? Uh, yep.
Yes, uh, high intensity focus ultrasound is a long invasive treatment modality. So here is a slide shows how it works. This is a transducer. The ultrasound beams are generated from this uh, surface of this transducer and just focused at a very tiny point. During the treatment, the ultrasound beams penetrate the human body and just focused as a target tumor. When the temper temperature increased to over 65 degrees, the growths occurred. From the monitor image, monitor ultrasound, we can see the grayscale changes like this. So when we see the grayscale changes like this, it means the water is boiling. It means the tumor is the necrosis is occurred. So now I can show you how did we do the treatment. For example, this is the liver. So first we start from here and we and we solicate. Then we can see the grayscale changes like this. Then we move the focus to the other point, just like here. Then we solicate again. Then we see the grayscale changes. Then we move down to this point and solicate like this. So when we, when we see the grayscale changes, area cover the whole tumor, then the treatment is completed. So it's very simple. So this is how did we do. So first I want to talk about the have a treatment for liver cancer. As we know that, we have so many ways can be used to treat the liver cancer. HIFU, of course, is one of these modalities. So in 2013, the first, the first foundation organized a meeting, a group meeting in Heidelberg, Germany. In this meeting, we reached a technical and clinical consensus. In this review, we can say uh, we all agree with that so far. The ultrasound guided high food, the GSA model remains the only system can be used to treat the, uh, the liver cancer. So for the liver cancer, high food can be used for not only for palliative treatment purpose, also can be used for the curative treatment purpose. So first I show you uh, the high food treatment for small HCC. So in China, of course, the, for small HCC, the treatment of choice is surgery. So only when the patients were not indicated for surgery or they are not indicated for RFA or they don't want to go to for this kind of treatment, then they come to uh, us for high treatment. So for the small HCC in this study, we just like the, if the solitary tumor should be smaller than five centimeters in diameter, or if the, the number should be less than three with each tumor uh, smaller than three centimeters in diameter. So this is a study we, at the beginning we did. So total 35 cases. And here is the uh, baseline cor characteristics of these patients. So we can say the, um, most of them had just one lesion. And uh, so most of them at a stage two. So after have treatment, we follow up this patient. The five year survival is around 17%, which is very good. So here we can see how the procedure. So this is the lesion, just four centimeters in diameter. So we start to treat this lesion. Also from the ultrasound, we can see this patient had ascites and the cirrhosis is severe. So no chance for surg surgery. So we treat this ca case from 2 p.m. Then you can see the grayscale changes like this. Totally 30 minutes, we finish this treatment and we can see the grayscale change area was larger than the tumor size. So, which is very good because for the curative treatment purpose. So generally the treatment, the room time for the small HCC is around two hours. So this most important for those, this kind of case, like the, the lesions uh, located in difficult locations, like high flow can be used for the 
palliative treatment also for curative treatment purpose. So now I'm going to show you for the small HCC. Can you? Yeah. So in China, like you already knew about that. So for the small HCC, the treatment of choice always go to surgery. So in our center, like the, if the patient come to me with a small HCC, they usually they are not indicated for surgery or they are not, uh, they don't want to have and go to surgery or they are not indicated for RFA or they don't want to go to, uh, for RFA. So in this study, then like we enrolled 35 uh, patients, like this is the baseline uh, characteristics. Like you, you can see all these patients, like the size, the average size is around four centimeters. And all, most of them at the stage two. So we performed the hive treatment, the follow-up results shows the five-year survival rate is around 70%. So like this is comparable with the treatment, uh, like the surgery results. So for the treatment, it's very simple. Like this case, this patient had a, a cirrhosis and also from, from the ultrasound, we can see still some ascites there. Here is this uh, lesion it is around four centimeters in diameter. So we treat this one uh, at, the four, uh, at the 2 p.m. Then totally 35 minutes, and you can see the grayscale change the area to cover the whole tumor. It's a treat the treatment area was larger than the tumor size, so for the cure relative treatment purpose. So like this one, it, the, the lesion is located in difficult locations. The patient had RFA before, but only updated small part of the lesion. So the pain came to our center, then we treated this patient with HIFU. So this uh, contrast ultrasound shows the, treat, the lung perfusion area. So one day after that, the CT scan showed the treated area. There was low, the tumor was completely ablated. Here is one month, and this is three months after that, the tumor was getting smaller, low recurrence, and low residual tumor in there. So this is an old case, and probably you already saw this before. This patient had had a surgery, had a surgical resection for HCC before, but later there was a new lesion there. So the patient didn't want to go to uh, the surgery, so came to our center, then we treat this patient. MRI shows three months after that, the treated region was much smaller than before, and you can see the, there was low enhancement. We could still see the surgical scar there, but the tumor was getting smaller. 19 months after that, there was low lesion disappeared after that. The two years after that, low recurrence, then this means still, like, like I said, pure rich treatment purpose. So let's go to the another one. And so like we knew that, both of the patients with the diagnosis was made, they were at one stage. So for this patient, this kind of patients, so usually we go to, we refer them to go to uh, TIE for transcatheter arterial embolization first. But unfortunately, uh, around 17 to 18% of the patients after, after taste, they still have the residual tumor there. So just like this case, uh, we can say this patient had a TIE first, but we saw, we saw the enhancement in the tumor. So only part of the lesion degrowth is there. So for this one, we should go to um, perform high food treatment for this kind of case. So you can compare, that's completely different. So we, that's what we do. So after taste, if the patient, the lesion was unblessed, then we just leave it alone. If they, we found some residual tumor, then we go to have high treatment. So we compare two, uh, two groups of these patients. So you can see from the next slide, then this, this is the baseline 
characteristics before treatment. So you can say look significant difference between the two group, groups. So after treatment, we follow up the patient at, at different, next, can you? And you can see the survival, survival rate at different follow-up time, the after uh, pace, we gave the high food treatment, the survival rate was much higher than those group just treated with TAU alone. So I think this is very good opportunity for the patient if they don't have other choice. Next. So this is a case like we treated a long time ago. This patient's resolution was 14 uh, centimeters in diameter. So this patient had a di diabetes and hypertension. Uh, she didn't have the chance. She was not indicated for surgery. Then this patient went to have the TAE first. Then we treated this patient with high four. So you can see the follow-up image. So different time, four years later, you can see the treated region was much smaller. There was low significant, there was low recurrence. So the patient still alive. So for this kind of patients, high four offer them another uh, option. So except uh, HCC for liver metastasis, high four actually is more sensitive. It's easier to treat uh, liver metastasis than HCC. So here, I just want to show you 82 cases, like the, the tumor number enrolling in this study, like um, we, the number should be uh, less than three. So in this, among the 82 patients, 28 patients had one lesion, 15 patients had two, and 39 patients had three. So the average size was four, six centimeters in diameter. So all of these patients not indicated for surgery, not indicated for RFA, or they don't want to have this kind of treatment. So they came to us, we treat with high food. So among them, 22 of the, eight, of the 82 patients had prior surgery and 30 had pace before have treatment. Or the total number of the lesions we treated the 100 75, but um, around 90% of the lesion had completely, had been completely ablated. And 18 of the lesions had a partially ab ablation. So about the edema and uh, uh, about the complication, we don't have major complications in, in these patients. Only 16 patients had local edema. So all of these patients had image evaluation after have treatment, CT, MRI, or PET, or ultrasound. So for the overall response rate was very good. So here is just some example, some cases like this case, this lesion, this patient had colon cancer and he delivered metastasis located adjacent to the IVC. Here's a portal vein. So with no other choice. So we treated this case, we just put the focus right there. You can see the grayscale changes. It's very easy. So just we recorded the grayscale changes uh, area. So after that, we this here is before the Pascal shows the lesion right there. So three weeks later, the Pascal shows the tumor was completely, the lesion was completely ablated. So the total solication time got 13 minutes. So, which is very good, very sensitive. Next. So here is another case, like this patient also had a colon cancer. Then the lesion, liver metastasis is just located segment one. So off, we, look, we knew that there was no other choice. So we treat this with high flow. So the total solication time was 33, Minutes. So one day after that, the CT scan shows we 
this is the treated region, no enhancement in this area, no perfusion. So the treated, the treated area was much larger than the tumor size because for the curative treatment purpose. So the, the good thing you can see the IVC, the portal vein, so low damage. So here, 30, one month after that, you can see the treated region, the tumor was getting smaller and we consider the perfusion of the major blood vessels. And here's three months and eight, eight months, two years and three years. So almost disappeared after three years. So uh, except for uh, primary liver cancer and uh, uh, liver metastasis for, and we also use this, can, uh, use this for the glandular carcinoma for those who are no chance for surgery or they are not indicated or they are not um, no response to chemo. So we can use this one to treat high food to treat this kind of patient for palliative treatment purpose. And uh, since the, the collagen carcinoma, uh, the blood supply is poor in most of the lesions. So also it's very sensitive. So next. So we can say like this case, this patient was very young, just 37, uh, 37 years old, a uh, 2014, she, uh, uh, he was diagnosed with gradual carcinoma. Uh, the C19 line was very high and he was giving chemotherapy. The tumor marker decreased, but three years later, the tumor marker increased again and low response to chemo. So we decided to treat this patient with high food, then give chemo again. So here is the lesion. You can, we can see multiple lesions. This largest one was, uh, this size was larger than 10 centimeters. So we treated this case, the, tra the treatment time was not, was not so long. So we can see the next slide. Next. So here, like the left lobe of the liver, you can, we can see the risk of changes area, just like this. Here is the stomach. So the total solication time, just like one hour. So, and the power we use 400 watts, the total energy. So the response was very good. So let's say the uh, follow up image next. So this before, here's after that. So we can say the most of the uh, tumor was ablated, was the tumor was, was treated. So after treatment, the tumor mark decreased again, then we give the chemo. So the patient benefit for this kind of treatment. Next. Here is another case. This patient, this patient was 17 years old, diagnosed with glandular carcinoma. So you can see the lesion over there is around seven centimeters in diameter. Here is this before we can see the perfusion of the lesion. And here's after that. So the total solication time is 3,000 seconds. So here's eight months after that was getting smaller. So for this patient, I think Haifu can uh, also have this patient. So for the liver cancer, uh, I can conclude that Haifu can be used for the curative treatment purpose, also palliative treatment purpose. So the pa patients can benefit for, from Haifu treatment. So here is about the liver. Now I'm going to share with, with you guys about the pancreatic cancer, the experience from uh, China. So we started to use high food to treat pancreatic cancer in uh, 20 years ago. So at the, early, at the old days, then we can see like this 25 cases, next. So at that time, so the effective rate was not as high as right now, like Hawker already showed us, yeah, this, like the pain relief almost 100%. Uh, uh, so at that time, like around 70% 70 70 like that. Also MRI shows like the local tumor control, control was, was good. So next. So here is about the tumor volume. We had four patients had a tumor disappear. And eight of them had a shrinkage, and 10 of them had a stable. So 
local control was good, the effective rate around 90%. For the tumor marker, 92% of the patients had a tumor marker decreased. So which was good, even at the early stage. Uh, so now I think it's different. Here is a table I summarize like different center, different country, they use this technique to treat the patient with pancreatic cancer, like the, from Korea 2004. At that time, after their, their patients, like the median survival time is around one year, like the four stage, four stage three and four stage four. The pain relief is 100%. They reported also in Milan, like Ossi, Frank Ossi from uh, his, uh, center is a, is a sim similar result like the Korea did at that time. Also Bulgaria and also Spain allow like from poker from Germany, they had better results law also in China. I think uh, I think this patient, we had the better results right now, probably one because of this technique, another one. Also, I think they like the chemo. Uh, they, the, the development of the chemo also helps this kind of patients. So I think in the future, probably we need organize a multiple center uh, studies to compare like the chemo and uh, between chemo and chemo wave, uh, chemo plus high food. So I think this future we should do. So I also just want to show you some cases next. So like this case, this patient um, had a pancreatic cancer over there, the celiac trunk was surrounded by the tumors, no other choice. So for this one, we treated it with a high full, the solidification time is 21 minutes. So CT scan shows 14 months after that, the treated region was getting smaller, the blood vessels, low damage, I think is very good for this one. So this patient like, um, after treatment, the pain disappeared. Local control was very good. The patient died two years after high food treatment. So I believe he, she benefited from this treatment. So next. Jenny, next. So for the, like the pancreatic cancer as the head of the pancreas, uh, we generally, we use a um, like metallic stent. So like Hawker said, plastic stent, but uh, we, most of our patients use a metallic stent. So because we just don't um, uh, take, the, take the chance. So we usually just like this, but it's okay. Uh, either plastic or metallic, but we can, after that, we can treat the patient safely. So here's CT, CT scan shows one day after that, the treated region. So then we can see the uh, stent over there, but low damage to the surrounding structures. Here's three months after that, we can see the treated region was getting smaller, PET scan shows no recurrence in the uh, treated region. Next. So this is a case actually we treated last year. This patient was very young, just 44 years old. Uh, he had a pancreatic cancer here, but also had a liver metastasis. So for this one, we treat the tumor here. Then we follow up this one. Then you can see three months after that, almost must disappear. Disappear, it was getting smaller. Also next, for the liver metastasis, here's before treatment. You can see multiple lesions over there. Also, we treated this one and after that gave chemo. And after that, three months after that, also the small lesions was getting smaller. So I think for the pancreatic cancer, a high food treatment is really a good choice for them. So according to our experience, ultrasound guided high food could be considered as safe and if effective approach for treating pancreatic cancer. So in the future, like I think we would like to work together to do some clinical study to confirm the, uh, the uh, 
to conform to conform the the role of high flu in the treatment of pancreatic cancer. So that's all I want to share with you. And uh, also, uh, I hope see you get soon in China in Chongqing. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. So again, um, if you stop sharing the screen or can see if there are any questions or uh, you can put them in the chats. Dear ladies and gentlemen, dear colleagues, I first have to apologize. To my deepest regret, my highly esteemed colleague, Milka Marinova, cannot attend this webinar. Therefore, it will be my part to give you a lecture on high food therapy and pancreatic cancer. We are pleased to have the opportunity to report our results in the following minutes. Only adults with histologically or clinically diagnosed unresectable pancreatic cancer were treated. Methodologically, the tumor diameter had to be greater than two centimeters. And all patients had tumor growth or marked tumor-related pain. Of course, the tumor had to be visible by sonography and the distance between the skin surface and the deepest tumor region should not exceed 11 centimeters. Therapy was not considered in children and adolescents, in patients with an ECOG status greater than two, and those in whom surgical resection was potentially an option or in whom the tumor could not be visualized by sonography. Theoretically, we would also not have treated patients in whom general anesthesia was not possible, but this was never the case. Accordingly, you can see from the following table that of 133 patients who presented to us with the question of possible high food treatment, only 80, or about 60%, were considered for high food therapy. In 25 of the excluded 53 patients, the tumor stage was too pronounced, and in nine, the general condition was so poor that local ablative therapy was no longer considered reasonable. Only in eight patients was the tumor sonographically not visible. Let me show a few examples in the following. Here's a patient who, despite liver metastasis, had only an approximately two centimeter tumor in the pancreatic corpus, in whom, for methodological reasons, hyphal therapy was not an option. Here's another patient in whom the pancreatic corpus carcinoma would have been treated by HIFU, but whose metastases were so extensive that local treatment of the pancreatic tumor was not considered useful. In this patient, the tumor located in the transition area from the pancreatic corpus to the pancreatic tail could not be visualized sonographically despite compression and preparatory measures. The same was true for this patient with a pancreatic tail carcinoma located in the splenic hilus. This was complicated by the fact that the distance between the skin surface and the tumor was 14 centimeters. In this patient too, the tumor marked with an arrow could not be visualized sonographically due to obesity and the very great depth of the tumor. For clarification, the distance between skin surface and tumor is shown here. This was 22 centimeters. It was also necessary to exclude patients who had metal clips in the area to be treated after previous surgical interventions or who had pronounced calcifications, as shown here in the patient on the right side. Both with metal clips and with pronounced calcifications, there is a risk of unpredictable sound scattering and sound amplification with a risk that cannot be calculated. In the meantime, we have treated 170 patients in Bonn, 82 men, 88 women. The mean age was 64 years, the youngest patient was 28, the oldest 89 years. Only three patients had a tumor confined to the pancreas. In all cases, a locally infiltrating or metastatic carcinoma was present. Most patients were found to be in ECOG stage one or two. We were also able to perform high therapy in patients with biliary drainage. And thus, 23 of the treated patients had a metal stent 
and 19 had a plastic stent in the extrahepatic bile ducts. A second HIFO treatment for local tumor progression was performed in 14 patients. As indicated, virtually all patients were symptomatic. This is shown in this table of our first 10 patients treated. As you can see, all reported pain and most also reported weight loss. In addition, most had local tumor growth despite chemotherapy. This illustration shows a schematic drawing of the ultrasound guided HIFU units used. Patients were positioned prone on the treatment table. In this treatment table, there is an opening with a water vessel. The patient must be positioned so that the skin over the organ to be treated is at the level of this opening, and thus the skin is in contact with the water. The parabolic therapeutic transducer with the convex diagnostic ultrasound probe in the center is located in this water basin. The therapeutic ultrasound beam was transmitted by 20 centimeter diameter ceramic transducer with a focal length of 15 centimeters operated at a frequency of 0.8 megahertz. To compress the stomach and dislocate the bowel away from the acoustic path, a balloon filled with degased water is positioned between the transducer and the skin or the anterior abdominal wall. During the HIFO procedure, the extracorporeal therapeutic transducer generates an ultrasound beam forming an oval-shaped focus-sized 1 to 3 millimeters in width and 8 to 15 millimeters in length. This slide demonstrates operator's real-time view during the ultrasound-guided high flow ablation of the pancreatic cancer. A, indicate the diagnostic ultrasound probe, B, the water basin, with a water-filled balloon between the patient's skin and the probe to improve the acoustic window. C, the anterior abdominal wall and patient's skin in contact to the water and water-filled balloon in prone position. D, this green cigar, the cigar formed a focus within the hypoechoic pancreatic tumor generated by the therapeutic transducer. The green cone here and the blue triangle up here show the acoustic pathway of the ultrasound beams. Using the auxiliary software, fusion of real-time ultrasound images with CT or MRI images obtained prior to the high treatment can be displayed. The figure shows CT images fused by the software during HIFO. The current ultrasound image of the HIFO device and the calculated projection of the therapeutic ultrasound beam on the CT image are displayed. The focal zone is shown as an oval cigar-shaped area in the tumor. Although this is a nice option, in practice it is rarely needed. Treatment time averaged a little less than two hours, but ranged from about one hour to about four hours. Pure zonication time averaged about 900 seconds, and the applied energy was 330,000 joules. This illustration shows images of a 78 years old male patient with inoperable cans of the pancreatic head within the cystically transformed pancreas and enclosed percutaneous transhepatic cholangiography and drainage, treated with HIFU. White arrowheads on these transverse contrast enhanced MRI images indicate the tumor before and after HIFU. Shown here are coronal contrast enhanced MRI images before and after HIFU, as well as coronal T2 weighted MRI images before and after HIFU. Please let me now present our results. The main indication of our treatment was, as already indicated, symptom relief, especially improvement of the pain reported by most patients, as well as improvement of the quality of life. Also important, but not the primary goal, was of course local tumor control and the hope for prolonged patient survival. Let me first talk about the main indications. Pain relief after high treatment was evaluated with the pain score of the European Organization for Research and Treatment of Cancer Quality of Life Questionnaire. Significant pain reduction was observed over time. The pain relief occurred directly to one week after hypotherapy. This effect persisted over time and even improved at three months follow-up. 
Also, significant improvement on the quality of life scales of the ERRTC questionnaire over time in patients with locally advanced or metastatic pancreatic cancer who underwent at least one follow-up examination after HIFO treatment. The functional improvements were accompanied by a significant reduction of tumor volume after HIFO therapy. Volume reduction six weeks and three months after HIFO treatment compared to baseline in percent are shown here. A 54 years old female patient with locally advanced hepatic and pulmonary metastatic pancreatic corpus tail carcinoma and marked opioid dependent tumor pain was treated with HIFU in addition to gemcitabine chemotherapy. No pain medication was required six weeks after HIFU. Shown here are axial and coronal contrast enhanced MRI images of a pancreatic tumor before HIFU immediately after HIFU, demonstrating no contrast enhancement in the treated tumor sections, indicative of effective ablation. The tumor volume reduction was 29% and 66% respectively six weeks and three months after HIFU. Shown here is a 56-year-old male patient with non-resectable locally advanced adenocarcinoma of the pancreatic head and corpus and significant cancer-related pain symptoms, who was treated by HIFU in our hospital after the first cycle of Folfurinox. Two days after HIFU, the pain was completely relieved. These are transverse contrast-enhanced MR images of treated tumor before HIFU when the CA99 was 648.8 units per milliliter. One day after HIFU treated, Tumor region shows no contrast enhancement indicative of effective ablation. Considerable regression of tumor volume of 62.6% was achieved six weeks after HIFO treatment. CA99 dropped to about half. Further tumor shrinkage with a volume reduction of 90.1% occurred three months after HIFO. CA99 dropped to 205.6 units per milliliter. 12 months after HIFU, tumor remission was achieved with a CA99 of only 15.8 units per milliliter. The extent to which patient survival was improved by HIFU therapy remains an open question, especially since no comparison group could be evaluated. However, it can be stated that the results are not worse than after chemotherapy alone, rather they tend to be better. These graphs show overall survival of patients with inoperable pancreatic cancer treated with HIFU. Overall survival time from initial diagnosis was 64% after 12 months with a median of 13.3 months. Survival time after HIFU intervention was 32% after 12 months with a median survival of six months. After these promising results, let's talk about complications. Evaluated here for our first 50 patients. In about half of the patients, we found subcutaneous edema of the ventral abdominal wall, shown here once in computed tomography. And this resolved in most cases but in a few, fatty distension persisted as shown here. About two thirds of patients reported marked abdominal pain after treatment, which persisted for about one day and then improved. Skin burning occurred in the two patients and regressed within the next four weeks. An increase in pancreatic enzymes was seen in 4% of patients in all without clinical relevance. And thus, we can summarize that with high food therapy, an effective and lasting improvement of tumor-related pain is possible in the majority of patients. This independent of the metastasis status. We found a significant reduction in the severity of pain as well as in the pain sensation. Due to this symptom improvement, pain medication could be significantly reduced in most patients. Thus, in about 50% of the patients, pain medication was no longer necessary at all after treatment. HIFO treatment was also possible in patients with biliary drainages. We found a sustained tumor volume reduction in about 80% of patients and, depending on the situation, 
A second hydrotherapy was also possible in cases of local tumor progression after the first treatment. Improved survival may also be achievable, but this would need to be evaluated by further studies. With this, I thank you for your attention, hope not to have put you all into deep sleep, and I'm available for questions. And of course, this work wouldn't have been possible without Milka Marinova and all of our PhD students. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Um, and uh, we can either, if there are any questions uh, now, um, either raise your hand or put it in the chats. Uh, and if, uh, otherwise we can just have the uh, questions at the end. So maybe um, I cannot see if there's anybody who wishes to ask a question now, please do. Otherwise, um, maybe during the presentation, the thing to do is to put the questions, uh, questions in the chat and then uh, we can discuss it at the end. So I can't see any questions. Ah, oh, yes, uh, Mohammed, uh, if you unmute Hello. yourself. Yeah, good afternoon. Welcome. Good afternoon, Dr. David. How are you? Uh, very well. Very nice to hear you. Yes, thank you very much. I, I, it's very, it was very interesting uh, presentation and uh, with very uh, good relation to our practice. I, I just have one question related to the biliary stenting. Uh, uh, usually in our practice, we prefer to put a metallic stent. I saw in the statistics uh, some patient with plastic stent. What is the situation uh, you face the doctor to uh, have uh, this? And uh, what is the safety margin to do plastic uh, stent with hive? Uh, yeah, we try to keep a wave regardless if it's plastic or if it's metal, because um, even if it's metal, it may be heated um, by the high for energy. So we try to keep away approximately one centimeter. Um, and yes, metal stents would be preferable, but um, if they have a plastic stent or internal and external drainage catheter, it's a plastic too, it's possible, but uh, you should keep away and we keep away uh, at least one centimeter. So, so you, 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 you produce, uh, you uh, do the procedure with plastic stent? Yeah, we did. Yeah. Okay. okay. Okay, because I faced this once, but I, uh, for my knowledge, I, uh, I prefer the metallic stent uh, on all patients. So you now uh, changing uh, our practice, uh, and this is great. Thank you very much. So we have a, a, a question from Stephen Chang to, uh, well, to everybody, but maybe um, uh, you could uh, answer this, Holger. So do we have data on the effect of HIFU independent of chem chemotherapy? And Professor Kung Zhu uh, says, I think there's evidence of HIFU plus chemotherapy is better than HIFU only, but I just wondered if you have any comments on that. Um, yeah, we are trying to do a, um, a comparative study with two groups, one with chemo only and one chemo plus HIFU. But uh, patient acquisition is more than slow. Sure. So we only have, I think, a, a little bit more than um, 10 patients during, I don't know, five years, something like this. So there are no data. Yeah. And um, there is not, uh, you can only look in the literature and see, but um, just for practical reasons, we have uh, seen patients, a lot of patients who ask for HIFU, they already have chemo because usually it's, um, these are patients from far outside Bonn. And so they show up after first line, second line uh, chemotherapy and despite chemotherapy tumor progress progression and pain because most are symptomatic. And then we try to do HIFU for symptomatic relief. Of course, we also try to, um, to downsize the tumor, but main indication is uh, symptomatic relief and this works. Yeah. 
Thank you very much. So we'll keep typing your questions into the chat. And so uh, this is to speak about the role of HIFU in liver and pancreatic tumors and maybe have some ideas for the future. So it's a great pleasure to, uh, uh, to speak. Um, let me just get rid of this lot. Um, uh, okay, so um, uh, anybody is, if you're ever in Oxford, you're very welcome here. And we would love to show you uh, our department and uh, our unit. So um, many people will have heard of William Osler. He was the uh, he was a Canadian who became was one of the founding fathers of the Johns Hopkins uh, Hospital in the United States, and he ended up as uh, the Regis Professor of Medicine uh, in Oxford. And um, uh, he is reputed to have said, "Diseases that harm requ require treatments that harm less," which is uh, uh, very appropriate for Haifu and uh, Mencius in the China. Uh, said something similar that compassion for fellows is a matter of the heart and uh, righteousness is the path but of course uh, surgery has come a long way uh, from um, uh, uh, open surgery which is what i spent most of my life doing big complicated renal surgery sometimes going up into the heart to the laparoscopic to my colleagues who are doing robotic surgery and I uh, say that I moved from open surgery and I missed laparoscopic and I missed robotic and have gone straight to non-invasive. Uh, and here again is William Osler in Oxford standing in his uh, room. He died in 1919. And we were privileged to have uh, Professor uh, Zhang Langling and uh, uh, Professor Lang uh, from the Chinese Medical Association of Obstetricians and Gynecologists in Oxford. And in fact, in 2017, the Chinese Osler Society uh, was founded um, in Oxford, um, but uh, is uh, in China now. And Gail Tahar and I had uh, the privilege of going to uh, Tibet a number of years ago, and we saw this, which was uh, very interesting. So this is like the Haifu principle, of course. Um, uh, sorry, let me just go back. So this is how they boil kettles in Tibet, but using a similar principle to, uh, to Haifu. Uh, and uh, Gail and I had a good time there. And uh, many of you will know this paper, which really is the first uh, one that talked about sound uh, being uh, useful uh, and the effects of high frequency sound waves in 1927. And uh, some of you may know uh, Tintin, and uh, I saw this book in the Calculus Affair where it talked about the power of sounds crushing and breaking windows. Uh, and of course, we know, uh, everybody who works with Haifu knows about the Fry brothers, an interesting name, but the two brothers who really started Haifu uh, work in the 1940s, looking at uh, Parkinson's disease, but they had to open the brain to treat. And then, of course, the drug treatment for Parkinson's overtook that. And uh, this is a rat liver, Gail Tahar showed, and the power of Haifu in just uh, making a hole here in rat liver. And uh, Gail, of course, uh, certainly in this country, was the one of the well, worldwide has been one of the leading uh, physicists working on Haifu over many years. And here is a setup that she made in the Royal Marsden in 1996 to treat liver cancer. Uh, this was uh, made by her. So this was one of the very early treatments of liver cancer. And uh, in China, um, as many of you will know, it started in 1997 and uh, the approval came in 1999. Well, in Oxford, we have had uh, contacts with the Chongqing Haifu for the last 20 years. Uh, I first went out there in 1999. And this was the purpose-built unit that we had in Oxford in uh, early 2000s, the first... Uh, 
purpose-built HIFU unit, I believe, in the Western world, even though it looks as if it's uh, just a fairly small shed. And we had this machine, the JC200 machine, uh, and now, um, although this, and, and here is the HIFU center in Chongqing in China, and in Oxford now we have this, um, uh, the JC200 machine. And this was the first patient who had metastatic liver cancer who was ever treated, I believe, in Europe, uh, certainly, um, with the, certainly with the Chongqing uh, JC, uh, JC machine. She died soon afterwards, but she allowed us, she had multiple met, mets in the liver, but she allowed us to treat uh, one of her liver tumors, which we then uh, removed post-mortem and saw the effectiveness. And this is the team that we had in the early days, Professor Feng Wu, that many of you uh, will know, David Wild, uh, two of, three of my research fellows, and um, uh, Val Berry, who is our administrator. So you've seen this. This is, of course, what we are using uh, with a focal length of 12 to 14 centimeters, um, targeting uh, the liver. Uh, and this is a piece of ox liver that Gail Taha uh, uh, showed me with. Uh, as you know, a very fine, very sharp margin of about six cells thick between the non-treated liver and the treated liver. So very, very precise. And indeed, uh, as you can see, every time you fire it, you get one of these little things and uh, how precise it can be in the middle of a block of uh, ox liver that this was used. And just um, painting out uh, uh, the tumours uh, like this. Uh, we've treated quite a, a lot of things over the years, mainly in clinical trials, uh, but I'm just talking about liver and pancreas uh, today with some ideas for the future. And this was the paper that we wrote in 2005 in the British Journal of Cancer, looking at the safety and feasibility of HIFU for the treatment of liver, and we looked at kidneys in a Western population, looking primarily at the safety and toxicity and then secondarily at the performance. And uh, we had uh, 56 patients. In the liver tumors, we had 28 that were treated non-surgically, and then we looked at them radiologically. Uh, we had seven treated surgically that then subsequently had the liver resected, and we looked at histology, similar for the kidney. And... Um, uh, these actually were the kidney patients uh, that we treated. And the problem with kidney, unlike liver, is um, the perinephric fat around the kidney absorbs uh, the HIFU, so it makes it less effective. Um, but anyway, as a result of that, it, uh, we managed to get the machine CE marked by the European community for treating liver and kidney, uh, kidney tumours, and it's... Uh, more recently been extended to include all abdominal tumours. And here's James Kennedy, who was one of the, my first research fellow who, who set up the whole scheme with me, who now has changed direction and is actually a priest, is the vicar of a nearby church up in Chipping Norton. But it was really James um, who was responsible through his uh, PhD work in uh, setting up the major link with China and in getting the JC machine approved for use in the Western world in Europe. He remains a good friend. He remains very interested in what's happening with Haifu and he's just a few miles north in Oxford. So uh, part, that was the ablation of the livers. <clears throat> and then uh, a current uh, radiological fellow who's just completing his training, did his DPhil on this, which was targeted drug delivery for liver tumors, which is very interesting. Uh, so using a focused ultrasound to release doxorubicin, and basically you take doxorubicin, a cytotoxic agent, and you put it into uh, thermosensitive liposomes. These are a little bit like butter. They are stable at 37 degrees centigrade, but they break open at 42 degrees centigrade. Um, and uh, so uh, 
here we are, just that small range. So you get drug release when the temperature hits 42 uh, degrees centigrade. And uh, a very, so you can get basically a very high concentration in a tumor if you manage to heat the tumor up to 42 degrees centigrade. So what my colleague Paul Lyon and uh, Constantine Kousios, who's professor of biomedical engineering in Oxford, uh, did was uh, took patients who had metastatic liver cancer and you put a slightly non-focused uh, beam, HIFU beam over the tumor so that you are heating the tumor up to 42 degrees centigrade. And then here, so here for example, is a, a, a tumor in the liver. You take a biopsy of it just to show that it is a malignant tumor, mainly secondaries from uh, colorectal cancer. And then we induce thermodox in, uh, peripherally into the vein. And then you um, heat up the, this particular area, the tumor, to 42 degrees centigrade. And then um, as the uh, uh, as the uh, liposomes pass through, they break open and you get targeted drug delivery. So here's uh, the baseline before a tumor delivery. Here's where we were heating it up with the ultrasound. And then you see a much increased uh, damage to the tumor, more so than just uh, ordinary drug delivery at two weeks and at four weeks. And uh, we had nine patients with complete radiological assessment. Uh, and uh, most of those showed significant increase in drug delivery to the tumor uh, with uh, good results. And this was the first study done in man of that. And it was written up in the Lancet Oncology in 2018. So what about pancreatic cancer? We do not have the uh, experience of pancreatic cancer at the moment that uh, Professor Holger Strunk has, but uh, we have treated uh, a few patients and we have some trials ongoing at the moment. So again, we have two trials. This is uh, my colleague, Paul Lyon, who's a very bright young uh, clinician uh, who did his DPhil on the targeted drug delivery for the liver. And uh, as far as pancreas goes, uh, Professor Wu, who's with us, uh, treated in China uh, eight people with unresectable pancreatic cancer with, uh, uh, again, mainly for pain relief. And um, you can see uh, the uh, effects here. It's not quite so easy to see with the pancreas, but um, uh, lack of, uh, there is lack of uptake after treatment. And uh, did, again, uh, put some stents in and treat uh, patients with stents in. Um, and uh, again, uh, for palliative treatment, I think this image is reversed because the pancreas is normally on the left-hand side, of course. But um, And we treated, uh, in the early days, we treated one patient in Oxford for pain with a good result and a relief of the pain. And we are now um, starting both an ablation trial of pancreatic cancer and also similar to the liver's targeted drug delivery for pancreatic tumors. So what about the future? Uh, it be interesting to see what my colleagues think about this, but I think the machines are gonna get smaller, the treatment will get faster, uh, the imaging will get better. And one of the interesting things that we are gonna look at with the pancreas is, uh, which I think is very exciting, is the possible immunological studies and whether um, certainly if you have the cavitation and you're breaking up the cells, whether if you uh, release some of the antigens, whether you may get anti-tumor antibodies. And, and if you do, whether that could possibly have an effect on metastatic disease. Uh, I don't know if anybody knows the 
uh, ongoing work with this, but certainly some time ago in Lyon in France, they were looking at endoscopic probes, and it may be that some of uh, Haifu on endoscopic probes may have uh, a place. This is also interesting. Some people may have heard of Eleanor Stride, who worked with Gail Tahar, a uh, very bright uh, research scientist who's working in Oxford, just uh, running this research center called Botna 3. And she uh, is interested in Haifu and is uh, looking at the possibility of targeted antibiotic delivery in the same way that you can do targeted drug delivery for uh, deep joint infections that are difficult to treat. Um, this is a colleague of mine, Peter uh, Ratcliffe, who uh, won the Nobel Prize for Medicine with two others in 1919 for his work on how uh, cells sense and respond to oxygen. And uh, maybe in the future we will be looking at prevention rather than cure, but I think as long as we're looking at cure, Haifu is going to have a very bright future. And also especially possibly due to COVID when of course you're not making any incisions and for a lot of these things you do not need um, theatre time, even if you need anaesthetic time and sedation. So uh, I'll stop sharing there and uh, thank you very much and uh, happy to answer any questions now or uh, perhaps later on. Yep. Are there any questions? I don't see any hand. Uh, let's uh, move on. And it's a pleasure to uh, introduce Professor Zhu uh, Yonghu, who is Chairman and Professor of the Department of Imaging and Interventional Radiology in uh, Fudan University in Shanghai Clinical Research Center. Hey, hmm. um, I... Yeah. So, sorry. Uh, uh, is, Continue, uh, please. <laughs> yes, thanks. So he's uh, a board member of the International Society of Minimum Invasive and uh, <laughs> Virtual Surgery and Associated Chairman of the Ultrasonic Therapy and Bioeffects Committee of the Chinese Association of Ultrasound in Medicine and Engineering and a permanent member of the Minion Non-Invasive Medicine Committee of Chinese Medical Doctors Association and uh, involved with the Tumor Ablation Committee of the Shanghai Anti-Cancer Association. He's on the editorial board of the Journal of Interventional Radiology in China and the Chinese Journal of Ultrasound Medicine and was a member of the European Society of Radiology and the Society of Interventional Radiology. So it's a great pleasure uh, to introduce you, and I'll hand over to you, Professor Zhu Yongyang. Hi, David. Good morning. Look at my screen. Background. Good morning. Um, my topic is MR evaluation for Fox ultrasound ablation in treatment of uh, liver cancer and uh, pancreatic cancer. I know the, the mechanism you guys already you know, talk about, and I just show the movie, and uh, it's pretty easy to. Oh, it will not works. Look like oh, it works. Yeah. It's, and uh, from the point to the point, and then become line and line to line, become the slice and slice, slide to slice, become the volume. And uh, we try to compute the completely abraded the tumor. And uh, normally, oh, it works. And uh, we try to increase the temperatures more than 60 degrees. And uh, probably ultrasound cannot see the temperature is, is more than 60 degrees, but MR can uh, do it. And uh, we first used the MI guide HIFU to do the uterine fibroids. Uh, I think it's 13 years ago, which is the first clinical trial in, Ch in China for MI guide HIFU to operate the tumor. 
So now you guys talk so much uh, in the uh, series and the clinic trial. I try to uh, show you sharing and uh, real world of our experience of work. Uh, first uh, case I'll show you, this is uh, HCC, and, uh, which is the tube located at the uh, right lobe. This guy is uh, uh, six years old, and the tumor is nearby the uh, the I think nearby the the, the vena cava and, uh, and the second uh, uh, hepatic uh, portal is large one, and uh, after high full we can look at it is uh, almost complete uh, ablated. It's uh, cool. However, other radio, radio frequency ablation can do it. The microwave can do it. The other advantage is non-invasive. So the patient can recover very quickly. And the second day they can you know, discharge and go back to home. That's important. However, this one is the hepatic carcinoma, which is not so, you know, the, fortunately. After twice tests, still there's the small portion of the necrosis of the tumor. And also this tumor located a difficult case, a difficult position, and the nearby the, the vena cava and the portal vein, and the, the surgeon refused to the you know resect this tumor because of the big risk, and also the twelve I mean um, seventy years old, and uh, we tried to use high food to you know operate. Unfortunately, it's not so successful, and uh, we try to think about why we cannot operate like the case before, the case one. So. We try to change the you know, environment of the you know the tumor action. Actually, it's just it's a tumor texture. We believe you know, the tumor texture will influence the ablation effect of a HIFO. So we use the needle. Actually, this needle is very tiny, it's a 12G needle. We call it as non-injured needle. And we inject the uh, iodized oil to change the, you know, the structure, change the texture of the tumor. And uh, look at the CT scan, we can see a lot of the, you know, the iodized oil, oil in located. And interesting so that we, uh, after that, we, I mean, the, Perform the high fall, it's a lot of cavitation happen. But ca cavitation happen that means we can see very clearly and uh, under the you know the ultrasound skin. So look look like you know the uterine fibrous. If some of the you know the uh, the bright become uh, covered all the tumor, that thing is we already operate the tumor. So interesting thing, that, you know, this case is metastatic lesions at the left lobe and the right lobe. And this case is after colon cancer surgery. It's a big one and actually look like it's more than seven, eight centimeter and we can complete the operator. But we not believe the CT scan. Some cases not like exactly true. Look at this is cases from the liver, metastasis from the ovarian cancer. The lesions located at the suburb capsule. And uh, after the high full, and we can see the operator here. However, we also did, I mean, the CT scan and cannot see anything. And also this lesion we not abated so very well, and uh, CT scan look like pretty good. 
actually this is just like as after one day and two day after the high flow. So we recommend and follow up examination is MRSK, conscious MRSK. And uh, this is hepatic metastasis from the colon cancer surgery. We, are, we have a lot of this kind of cases because so many, you know, the cases after in the colon cancer remove, I mean, the resector. So this guy is a female, 60 years old, and uh, we can see conscious enhanced uh, MI and this is before the high fall, after this, this update and the, the lesion shrink. And the same thing this one in the T2 weight image and the before high fall and after high fall. And after high fall we can look at is the wall. I mean, it's the chest wall and the abdominal wall. It's edema, this is the, the path of the ultrasound penetrate. Uh, this case is uh, is also hepatic metastasis from the um, pancreatic cancer. And uh, this lesion is a small one, and the, the patient refused to the, you know, the and the go to surgery, and we can look at this ultrasound guide high four. It's very clear. So look at this one is the, is liver here and uh, and the lesion over there and uh, after operated and the half operated and uh, the almost complete you know necrosis. This uh, channeling carcinoma cancer of the liver at the right lobe and the bigger one this is much malignant. And uh, after we inject the iodized oil and then operate complete, almost complete, operate the tumor. <coughs> it's pretty easy. Also look at this one, it's look at not so much edema <coughs> on the path of the ultrasound. And uh, another one is female, and uh, 80 years old, HCC on the right lobe, and uh, this is before and after that I mean, it's complete. However, this is in the edema is much than before. The good thing is the skin is fine, and uh, this is, is, is also your method from the colon cancer surgery. And the lesion is located between in the first and the second hepatic portal. It's nearby the portal vein and also in a cava. It's a difficult location for the surgery and the radio frequency ablation, also micro ablation as well. And uh, this is middle of, I mean, just after high fall, and we can see the, all the, you know, the brightest echo and uh, this is liver and this is lesion over there almost complete operated and uh, follow up of the MI conscious MI and uh, this is the result pretty good. Same thing is this is located in the second uh, hepatic portal and it's also different case nearby the heart. Okay, also this one also nearby, nearby the heart, right? Okay, so we pretty easy heart over there here, and the symbol closed, closer is heart. So, okay, so this is a lesion, is so very difficult, and uh, nobody can uh, treat it. Maybe only chemo, and we can uh, abate this the difficult location of the hepatic metastasis. The, this lesion also is a difficult in the location is, this is after say, ascending the colon cancer surgery and the metastasis lesions over here. 
and we try to operate. Although you look at this image, is pretty, you know, much obvious. And uh, but this is operate is so not so good, but it's fine. And we try to also this is location is is difficult to I mean so inject the iodized oil. So we just uh, I mean so perform the palliative treatment. So the patient will feel the pain. We try to use the, you know, the IV analysis. It's pretty easy. And uh, the patient can accept this patient just a little sleep after you know, the procedure is quick, uh, recover very quickly. We use two kind of the medicine. This is propofen. And uh, this one is the HCC portobain tumor thrombosis over here, and also the right branches was invaded. And, and as a surgeon did not like her, him, and also no other in I mean, the treatment procedure to do it. So uh, we accepted this patient and look at this, well, it's invaded in you know, the brand, uh, right branch of the portal vein. And this is the ultrasound image. We can see this bottle vein and some cysts all here, some slumbers all here. We just hit, direct hit at the focal, focus, you know, the, the slum cysts. And the good thing is the slum cysts, slum cysts disappeared and after one month of treatment. And Look at this, all the you know the issues disappear. We follow in six, uh, for fifteen months. Look at it's become normal. Actually, this patient is now survived for three years. FP decrease fifteen and uh, the other you know the analysis we IV analysis we use the placebox. It's, it's very safe and also very effective. And the, the patient recovered very quickly. After a, the procedure, just like five minutes, they can recover and the patient very happy for this kind of thing. This guy is after sigmoid colon cancer, I mean, the surgery. And there's hepatic metastasis over here. And uh, we in amateur it has much high in energy. Actually, we used uh, 400 watt and uh, two seconds to when I mean uh, the the sonication and uh, one second uh, intervals calling. And uh, we can look at this is almost completed. Uh, I mean, it's ablated. However, there's some of the, you know, the bleeding look like. But this is fine. This patient is fine. It does not feel, you know, so pain. I saw something during the procedure, and uh, they discharge. He discharged. He discharged next days. Until now, it's still. I mean, it's no complication. This is, you know, the hepatic metastasis also is after colon cancer in uh, surgery. And the patient, the deletion is located second the hepatic portal. There's a risk for the radio frequency because it's the bleeding and the thrombus in the vena cava. So they try to Refer to us and use high full. After high full, look at like the, the vessels still and uh, keep uh, intact and uh, the lesion almost completely uh, ablated. And uh, the lesion also close, very close to the heart. So it's good thing for high full to, I mean, uh, perform for the challenger cases. Things the uh, radio frequency and the microwave and cannot uh, do it. We can complete the, you know, the complete the procedure and complete the treatment. 
this is a bigger one and the, compared to the other patients. And we can look at this patients already has a you know, better symptom and uh, they complex the, the invade the vena cava and uh, invade the portal vein and the uh, hepatic vein. And this is uh, under ultrasound guide. This is uh, the liver over here and the lesion over there. And we injected the IO, dyes the oil and then and shoot this sonication and uh, look at the bright, become bright. And this is a, after first end uh, you know, of the ultrasound ablation, box ultrasound ablation, uh, majority portion of the lesion completed ablated. Still, there's some in the, at the edge of the lesion and there's a residual tumor. And we perform the second one after one month, and the patient refused to underwent to underwent the MI, you know, the image becomes, you think it's too much cost. Actually, we cannot uh, um, left the, the good image, but the patient is very good. Uh, also, we try to, you know, introduce is some of the metastasis not so, successful the treatment. Uh, this is before treatment and we use the first use the test and the look at is, is lack of the blood supply. And we try to inject either iodized oil and look at this is some of the, the oil deposit in the lesion. And the CT scan find that this is conscious over the head there. And after one month, become large one. So we try to first use the high food to operate in you know, the largest one in the, at the left lobe. And uh, this was for second uh, procedures. The patient in the field pain relief and uh, in a good situation after first uh, ultrasound, got a focus ultrasound ablation surgery. Also, same thing, this one patient is pain in the upper abdominal pain, in the, and the patient is pan pancreatic cancer, which is already is extensive metastasis in the liver. And we tried to first in the operator is the largest one and nearby the the, you know, the stomach and the small bowel. This is nearby the, this, you know, the gastrointestinal check. It's we afraid of injury, this, the, you know, the check. And the ultrasound ablation, a Fox ultrasound ablation can away, avoid this, this risk. It's pretty good that we can keep it a safe the age. And we next one we can try to then operate other ones. This is actually is palliative treatment. We try to and reduce the tumor size and to I mean increase life times and also is improve the quality of the life. This one can I do this in Japan? You know the meals from the liver cancer. And the, the lesion is located in the abdominal the cavity. And uh, we try to use high intensity Fox ultrasound with much high energy. As you look at the edemas on the, you know, the right uh, abdominal wall, it becomes very sick. And uh, after treatment, we can see it's only 100% in the portion of the lesion ablated. It's fine, we try to uh, keep, uh, I mean, this uh, the tumor size down. Second one, we can uh, introduce the treatment of the pancreatic cancer. And this is the images we, are, we have and uh, performed the ultrasound guide, this is the IOT. 
this is uh, you know ceric chunk and this is uh, tumor pancreas tumor and this is uh, liver so our colleague for colleague in the shanghai they saw this image they think it's pretty good and it's easy to show the pancreas you know structure and the tumor structure and the same thing you know, we can operate the, the tumor from the you know, point to line to slice and to volume okay this patient's before uh, treatment which is uh, pancreas head cancer and uh, we try to use this path of the ultrasound to penetrate the in the skin. However, this look at this so many, you know, the bowel and the stomach are also nearby. So we try to use the, some of the gel in the in, intake and then can let this small bowel and you know, has some of the gel over here and we use this pass and penetrate it. Okay, so fine. And after treatment, uh, we can see the tumor, vaginal tumor is lack of blood supplies and look like it is less perfuse. So sometimes we use the, you know, the conscious ultrasound to monitor the ablator area. However, look like here is very clear, but most of the situation are believe conscious, arch, conscious enhanced ultrasound cannot see very well. Only you know, in my image you can see, it's a very clear operating area. And this is before high full and after high full, you can see this operating area is pretty good. And also the CA-199 indicates very quickly. So, same thing is the MI. If we use the T1 with image and the T2 with image, and we can see the lesion, but we not sure how much you know, ablate the tension. But we use the, the conscious enhanced that we can see very well in the ablate area. And compare the, the CT scan where we show it. And this is the CT scan. We can see the metal standard in the common uh, bio duct and we say clear. However, the MR, we cannot see it. This is the before the treatment and we can see the tumor already invaded the vessels and, uh, and uh, we after treatment, uh, the vessels still keep uh, intact and, uh, and the tumor already operated. So this is before treatment, and uh, this is uh, pancreatic neck cancer after two months, and we see this ablated area, this, and the tumor shrink. So this slide, so I show you so why we do not use a CT scan for follow-up after half treatment. This is uh, advanced cancer at the pancreatic neck. And before high full look at this is the tumor over there. And the after treatment, uh, we see not so very well. And uh, MR, we see this is clear the ablation area. So we recommend the MR is better than CT for follow up. This case, unfortunately, the patient died um, 10 days ago. The patient is almost treatment one year is a big one. And uh, after treatment, uh, the tumor shrink and also ablation areas is become small. This pancreatic cancer is a very, very tough cancer. Even when treat very well from the image. However, the patient is not feel pain, but the exhaust for the body. For, because they always you know, take some medicine, chemo, and become weak and weak. We cannot stop the you know, give 
her in the chemo because they think a, a physician think which the comprehensive treatment. So that's, we do not know the, how to I mean, get a good approach for treatment of the pancreas cancer. Since the, from image, the tumors become the almost upright very well and, uh, and the size becomes small, the patient dies. So this case, uh, I think is Dr. Zhang Lian and with Dr. Milk and uh, performed in the, in the Germany and the tumors look like has become you know, smaller and ablated very well. However, I'm not sure that, you know, how long uh, the patient survive. That's our question. We need to know in the, not only improve the quality of life, also we want to know the, how much time will that patient survive. So as a whole, I think uh, pancreatic cancer, we use the high food treatment is feasible and treatment, uh, it is effective and also safety. That's, we treated the pancreatic cancer and the liver cancer, there's no complication. Actually tell you that the complication is less than in a high food treatment uh, uterine fibroids. The year, in the year before last year, then we performed the first one in 5G back the remote control, I mean, is high full. That's we think that if we have the 5G everywhere, we can the, perform the uh, in remote the surgery by high full. Thank you. Thank you for your attention. Thank you very much indeed. Um, just before we move on, there are a couple of interesting questions on the chat, and I just wondered if you have any comments about that, about um, the um, ablating, uh, ablating tumours near uh, blood vessels and how close do you go? And um, I think Professor Zhu was uh, replying to it, but uh, it, uh, is there any danger ever of perforating the blood vessel? Actually, I tell you that we shoot the vessel, the vessel cannot injure it. That's our, you know, so much, you know, the advantages to, to high full. And we just, like, for example, we can treat the, the, the thrombus, the portal vein, um, in portal vein by high full. There's no injury, even the vena cava and the hepatic vein, also in the so vessel, you cannot you know, in it. Oh, yeah. Thank you very much. I'll hand over You're to Holger. Um, yeah, let me uh, comment on this danger for the vessels. In most cases, there is no danger. However, if there is tumor encasement, and we are very, very careful not to, um, to um, shoot on the vessel directly. And we are very careful to stay a little bit away from the vessels because we have seen patients getting some edema in the, in the tumor after therapy. And this edema was enough to occlude the vessel. In most patients, th this goes away. But in some patients, let's um, suppose it's, it's a SMA, superior mesenteric artery narrowed by the tumor, tumor encasement. So if this vessel, will get occluded, you will get uh, bowel ischemia, and no surgeon will uh, save this patient. So I would say there is not a risk of bleeding, but there's a risk of um, occlusion of arteries or veins due to tumor edema. Now, you see it's a, what kind of tumor? Actually, you and I mean, what kind uh, of, pancreatic, for example? Pancreatic, pancreatic. I, I don't pancreatic. care about. Uh, oh, I don't care. I don't uh, care about liver liver uh, vessels. Oh, they, liver. I just talk about the liver. Yeah, liver pancreatic. I no no. I mean, not so much. You know, the energy to yeah. give because there's some the you know small bowel and the stomach over there, and we not uh, shooting the arterial. Actually, I talk about the vena cava 
a particular weighing also put the weighing in the number. Okay. Yeah, there I think it's no no need to stay away. Okay. Any more questions? I haven't read the chat, so maybe I should have a look on this. Or oh, Jenny, do you follow for? Uh, for there's the, nothing else on the chat. I don't questions? think. Okay. Yeah. So yes, we then can move on to the last lecture. It's Professor Zhu Quin, a friend of mine, one of my teacher. <laughs> so now the. Yeah. Uh, teacher, hi. <laughs> so Professor Quim is um, he's from Second Affiliated Hospital of Chongqing Medical University, and uh, he's an associate, associate professor. And his clinical applications of high intensity focus ultrasound, clinical oncology, and basic and clinical research of HIV. In 2020, he awarded the uh, I don't know how to pronounce correctly Kuanwen talents program of the second affiliated hospital of Chongqing Medical University. So Quinn, I'm very interested uh, in your video. I think you will show a video uh, about the surgery video hypo treatment for pancreatic cancer. Please go ahead. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair, Professor Kristen and Professor Strunk. Thank you, everyone. And now in China, it's very late. It's uh, 9.30 PM. So. I will try my best to speed up. Well, can you see the PPT here? Yes, great. Uh, okay. So our hospital was founded uh, almost 130 years ago. So this is uh, the historic picture of our hospital. And this is the hive team of us the second affiliate hospital of Chongqing Medical University. Well, also the national training base for health treatment was founded in our hospital since September, 2005. It's over uh, almost uh, over 15 years. During last 20 years, there are over 500 doctors and trained in our center. They are from 120 clinics or hospitals or university. See these pictures? Well, personally, I have the experience of have treatment for, for the tumors or the lesions or the diseases from the head and to the chest wall, a metastasis on the chest wall, in breast, a breast cancer, in liver, in pancreas, in kidney. This case from PISA, Professor Candio. And uterus. Also, happened on the legs, adrenal glands, and the bones. Inside the abdominal wall, uh, and even on the bottom of the feet. So we can say the candidates for health treatment could be from head to feet. So, the, as we all know, the heat delivered by the, uh, by the ultrasound could ablate or treat those solid tumors. Also, we have the two clinical guidelines in China. The first one was published in 2005, and the second was published last year. Also, we have another guidelines in the Fudan University Shanghai Cancer Center. So here in China, we, we can gather the evidences and the experience of high treatment for pancreatic cancer. This article uh, was from 
Fudan University, Shanghai Cancer Center, it include in it in it including over 400 cases accepted have treatment. And the, it was found that the have treatment get provide the survival benefits for the patient. Also, the experience from the surgeon leads us to that if we perform the health treatment as a pre-operative treatment before opening surgery for those patients with borderline resectable pancreatic cancer, it is possible to improve the possibility of the R0 or R1 resection. So compared with those patient accepted RT radiation therapy, this data from MD Anderson Cancer Center, it was only around 4%. That means the HIF treatment probably provide a better opportunity for patients with the borderline resectable pancreatic cancer to accept the future R R0 resection. Also, we found that if we perform the half plus chemo together, it's a com it's a, that means a local half ablation plus a systemic medicine therapy, it will give more uh, longer survival for the patients. So in our center, at the very beginning, it was just a palliative treatment. The first, uh, the initial target from us, it just a, a local and the partial ablation for the patient and the, or try to control or release the pain. Now, but during these years, we found that there might there are evidences of benefits for survival and the benefits for the pain control or release and the benefit to improve the quality of life for this patient with pancreatic cancer. Well, I have to quit to the video. Is it clear? This is the, the operation room in our center. We can see the, the patient table is on the center of the room. Quinn, uh, you are back to the whatever mode, but well, we don't see the video. I will quit and uh, and uh, okay. The one. Just to let you know. <laughs> okay, okay, now it's video. That? Okay, again, start. So, this is the uh, half room of our center. We can say the patient table is in the center of the room. The patient is in prone position. Well, here, we can stop here. We can see this is a metal frame here and with the, with the pillow belt to hold the patient here and closer. Okay, stop here. There is an, a point that I want to emphasize that with the prone position, we should make sure the free of the joints here, the, the, the shoulder and the elbow joints there. We say that all joints free during the half treatment because the ultrasound guided half treatment is from the lower part, transducer is inside this tank. The transducer is here. So the therapeutic ultrasound is from the lower part to the upper part from this direction, from lower to upper. 
so that for this patient, it is in prone position, we should make sure all the joints are free, all joints are free to, um, to avoid such uh, the muscle or the nerve injury during the treatment. Well, go, go on. And then this patient is under the general anesthesia. See here, the, the shoulder, the elbow, the joints free. Well, it's under general anesthesia. And the, the, and the professor Yong Hua Xu said, it is possible to perform the health treatment for pancreatic cancer uh, under sedation. Yes, it is. In our center, the ratio is uh, uh, about two to one. Two patients with pan pancreatic cancer accepted general anesthesia. The one accepted uh, deep sedation. It's it depends on the situation for the patients and the purpose of our operation. Yeah. Well, this is the uh, chief doctor for this uh, operation. This is this is the workshop. Say here, and this is ultrasound image the real-time monitoring beam monitor ultrasound. And this one is the image before treatment with the image helped real-time ultrasound guided therapy. It is possible to, to find all the details during treatment. Well, let's go back to the to the PPT again. Here, I would like to share uh, a video during, uh, um, from one case here, we can say the, the right part is the patient. The tumor is on the body of the pancreas and it invade uh, it, uh, the, the, the blood vessels was included by the tumor from here. See, this is spine and this is the aorta and this is the celiac trunk here. This is the body of the pancreas, and we can see the tumor is here. This video is before treatment. Okay, let's say it. It's under the uh, CUS, the contrasting enhanced ultrasound um, image with the uh, with the solar view injection. We can see here enhancement here. So the micro bubble enters to the blood vessels first, and then and the less bubble enters to the tumor. So generally speaking, the pancreatic cancer is a poor blood supply tumor. So the aorta strong enhanced, but the tumor was poorly enhanced. Well, let's jump to the treatment here. Let's say the hyper change will happen here. The same precision, the therapeutic, the invisible ultrasound from the lower part, from the transducer here, and focus it on here. A each sort of occasion got a uh, hyperechoic change. We call this a massive grayscale change.
it's larger and larger. Okay, speed up. Another point here. Another massive green screen change. So with these solid casings, one dot by one dot, we will place the the uh the place the focus for where we want to treat or where we want to ablate and finally complete the treatment plan. Well, after that, we perform another CUS with the solar view, again, to see what happened to the tumor. Almost no enhancement happened here. Well, this is the videos. Well, another case is here, just treated last week. This case, the ET, uh, the this gentleman was diagnosed on this uh, May. There was pain happened. Uh, on the belly and the back, the C99 is over 1,000. So after they now after diagnosed it, the the chemotherapy was performed six months. The C99 it was 500 on uh, one month ago. And here, the tumor size was smaller than the very beginning. And yesterday, the rescan after have turned, we see that the tumor was ablated successfully, and the C199 is only 265. This case was two hours ago, we accepted this lady. It was a very huge one with calcification inside. And even with a blood vessel, this is SMA here, a blood vessel here. So after treatment, we can say that it, it was almost complete ablated and the blood vessel was safe, no any change is here. So generally speaking, we believe that based on the uh, clinical reports and from our experiences, we believe that first, they have treatment will benefit patients with pancreatic cancer for survival. So far, we found that the, the median survival time was 12 to 24 months. The second one is that it will help us doctors to control or release the cancer-related pain for those patients. The third is that it is possible to be a pre-surgery for borderline resectable ones. I believe the surgeons will like this idea to use this long invasive treatment to help them to change the 
uh, stage of the patient and perform a, a R0 resection for pancreatic cancer. Also, there is strong evidence that the health treatment will improve the quality of life for patients with pancreatic cancer. So finally, we believe it is a safe and a minimal in, invas invasive treatment. Well, this is what I want to share you. Thank you. And a thank, and a grazie. Thanks. Great. Great, thank you very much. Thank you, Professor. So, any questions? Interesting lecture, thank you very much. Are there questions? Anything in the chat? I don't see any questions. Any hands up? No? Okay. So in Germany, it's only early afternoon, so no need to hurry. <laughs> <laughs> the same, same in Oxford, <laughs> even earlier. No hurry to go here. <laughs> oh, that's good. great. So, yes, so if uh, there are no questions, no comments any longer, David, anything you want to mention? Uh, no, I think we've had some interesting questions. The most interesting one, which you were very helpful with, was uh, my concern about treating near um, uh, large vessels. But what you said was very helpful. So thank you. OK. Professor Zhang, you still there? Do you want to comment? Or the organizer? Yes, I'm here. So it's, you guys just did a wonderful job. So uh, I enjoy this meeting. <laughs> so oh, how, was, how about see but, you soon in China or either yeah. in Germany or UK? Yeah, I, I would appreciate. Uh, so it's already nice to see you after this long period. Yeah. It's more than more than one and a half year. So yeah. I don't know if this um, pandemia will stop. So I, I guess uh, now for everybody going to the Far East from our view of point uh, will not be possible in the near future. Hopefully it will. Yes, I'm looking every month. I'm looking in the reglements to see if it's possible again. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but, uh, well, I'm I sure. <laughs> I hope sometime next year, maybe, maybe the yeah. middle of next year. <laughs> well, I would be happy. So then, otherwise, I will thank everybody. And uh, maybe see you again for the second part of this uh, webinar. Yeah. Thank and, you very uh, much. So I, yes, thank you very much. I'm will be unable to join the second part as I am away, but it's been very good to join the first part. Yeah. So then have a nice evening, nice afternoon, and uh, hopefully see you soon. <laughs>